for your testimony. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I accepted this invitation because I bet I'm one of the few people old enough to remember how bad it was <laughs> when abortion was illegal. That's why what's happening in Texas is not only a local issue or a women's issue, it's a step against democracy, which allows us to control our own bodies and our own voices. Remember when Hitler was elected, and he was elected, his very first official act was to padlock the family planning clinics and declare abortion a crime against the state. Mussolini did exactly the same thing because they knew that controlling reproduction and nationalizing women's bodies is the first step in a controlling state, an all controlling state. The huge majority of American women stand for democracy and in opposition to Texas Senate Bill 8. We do not want to have our bodies nationalized. Otherwise, we will be very close to turning back the clock to the days of the 1950s when one in three women had an illegal and a dangerous abortion. What were those days like? Well, you know, I was there, and I can tell you, as many older women can, they were filled with danger for women and guilt for both women and men. It was a time when one in three or four women needed an abortion at some time in their lives and so had to enter into a criminal underground without even the most basic medical safeguards or protection from sexual exploitation by the doctors themselves. In the 1950s, I lived this situation, which was also true in England. I was working as a waitress in London on my way to India. I had left an engagement to a very nice man here at home who I knew, would, we both knew, I think, that marriage would not be the right thing for us. And I was awaiting a visa for that uh, trip to India. That fellowship was to be my bridge to a different life, yet I also had realized that I was pregnant. After what seemed to be an eternity of confusion and fear, I found a very kind mm -hmm. and brave English doctor who was willing to help me by using a loophole in the law that allowed uh, a, a, an abortion uh, if he signed a statement saying that pregnancy was dangerous to my physical or mental health. And he said to me, but you must promise me two things. You must never tell anyone my name, and you must do what you want to do with your life. I'm sure that man is no longer with us and has not been for many years, yet I am grateful to him to this day, and I dedicated a book to him. Now in this country, some many want to declare a fertilized egg to be a legal person, thus not only criminalizing abortion, but nationalizing women's bodies throughout our childbearing years by establishing a direct relationship between the government and a fertilized egg. Indeed, the laws already in existence deprive poor women who must depend on the government for health care, young women without parental or judicial permission, and even women in the U.S. military, all deprived of the reproductive rights available to other women. Many of them are already the victims of illegal and unsafe abortions that have become their only recourse. In the 1950s, the fact that I could be helped was uh, all that was significant. I couldn't have, have not had the same safe and legal abortion if I'd stayed in the United States where draconian anti-abortion laws like those now threatened again were causing even more deaths than in England. Even so, I could afford to find a way out as most women could not. 
what would a return to the dark days of U.S. history mean? I remember women who died from septic abortions. I remember children who were left motherless by women who simply wanted to have no more children than they could afford to care for. Already the anti-abortion right wing has created such martyrs as Rosie Jimenez, who died in 1977, the first of many women to be killed by the Hyde Amendment that denies Medicaid funding for abortion, or Becky Bell, who died in 1988, the first of many young women to be killed by the parental consent laws that caused her to seek an illegal abortion rather than disappoint a loving family. Standing up for reproductive justice in Texas is not only standing up for women, it is very simply standing up for democracy. Without decision-making power over our own bodies, there is no democracy. We cannot, we must not nationalize women's bodies. We must let each woman make this decision for herself. Thank you. Thank you.